For more of me, head on over to Twitch at twitch.tv slash biggdgeekdom101 where I provide exclusive streams that you will not see here on YouTube and bonus content for y'all to check out, including old video games, anime, and a heck of a lot more. Twitch.tv slash biggdgeekdom101. I'll see you there. So I want to talk to y'all about the one thing about Dragon Ball Super Superhero that I really did not like. It's not a perfect movie. There are some issues here and there with it. I enjoyed it overall, but there are problems. But there was one specific thing in the film that I really, really, really despise. So before I go any further, this video will contain spoilers for Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. So if you have not seen the film, this is not the video for you. Or if you don't care, that's okay as well. So let's get into it. During the film... There is a sequence where Goku and Vegeta are training and Vegeta is meditating. And he reveals that the reason why he is meditating is because during the Tournament of Power, he picked up on the fact that Jiren was very, very hyper-focused. He was very much focused. He was very much under control. And that Vegeta wants to borrow that concept in order to make himself a better fighter. Now, that part of the story I actually like because the idea that Jiren was so chill for most of the story until literally near the end is when he snaps and tries to kill Goku's friends in the anime version. I like the fact that Vegeta noticed that and that Vegeta was trying to learn from that. That's always a good thing when a character sees an enemy do something or a rival and tries to learn it. And Vegeta certainly at one point even wanted to learn Ultra Instinct as well. So Vegeta thinks that this could help him be a better fighter. But what I did not like is the line in the film, and remember, this movie is written by Toriyama. I did not like the line in the film where Vegeta says that Jiren was actually not that strong. He was not that far ahead of us. He just knew how to use his power. Now, I really don't like that because not only does that somewhat nerf Jiren, and that does bug me, and I'll get into why in a minute, but because really that contradicts pretty much all the marketing that was going on during that time. Now, obviously, if you've been around the channel long enough, and if you've been around Dragon Ball long enough, you know that marketing for these movies is always going to be overly hyped. The Japanese love to overly hype things up. So whenever there's a new villain, they always say it's the strongest villain or it's the most powerful or the most dangerous and stuff like that. You know, if you remember back in 2015... The original teaser for the, actually it was summer of 2014, the original teaser for Resurrection F, or what would become Resurrection F, the original teaser for that, it was just called Dragon Ball Z 2015 originally, and it talked about the worst wish in history being made. That worst wish wound up being the resurrection of Frieza, which is not really the worst wish that was made, because ultimately Frieza wound up not getting his way. And ultimately, at the end of everything, Goku and Vegeta still won and the Earth was safe. Even though there, it did get blown up in the film, when we reverse time, it almost never happened. It pretty much didn't happen. But my point is, if we go back to Dragon Ball Super and when Jiren was first being teased and later introduced, I was covering Dragon Ball Super news here on this channel pretty much every single week, covering all of the different... Spoilers that had come out with the magazines. I was covering all the different statements made, and they really hyped Jiren up. Jiren was hyped up even before he appeared as being the so called mortal who is stronger than gods of destruction. That's who Jiren wound up being. So, although they did not clarify which gods of destruction were the ones that he was more powerful than, obviously all of us back then assumed he's talking about Beerus because that's the one that we had become most familiar with in the series, but that seems to have changed as time progressed, but now it's really gone downhill because if you remember Jiren and how they wrote him, and it was a lot more, it was a lot different in the anime versus the manga because in the anime he did appear to be much more powerful. This dude was reflecting and flicking off Super Saiyan God Goku with one finger, not, you know, flipping off like giving him the middle finger, but I mean blocking his attacks with one finger. Goku hit him with everything with the Kaioken blue, and nothing seemed to have affected him. And then as the fight progressed, Goku and Vegeta together started to gain some leverage on him, but he still was able to pretty much manhandle them for most of that fight. 
Now, as I've said before, Toriyama sends Toei Animation a manuscript. Perhaps Toriyama did not really give details on his power. Perhaps Toriyama did not really focus too much on that. And Toei Animation went in and possibly even, you know, took liberties to make him stronger and then realized, wait, we kind of made him too strong and tried to scale him back. That's entirely possible, but either way, Jiren was really a threat to everyone at least when it comes to the Terminal of Power, and he was pretty much the strongest guy in that thing until Goku was able to tap into Mastered UI in Dragon Ball Super Episode 130, or Complete a UI, or whatever you want to call it. It really bugs me because it's not just that they're nerfing an old character, which, again, that in itself is annoying. I'm one of those Dragon Ball fans that really disliked the disrespect that the Toei writer showed Cell in the Other World Tournament, because it just took them 70-something episodes of the Android arc to finally beat Cell, and then he ends up getting one-shotted in the other world tournament. That always bugged me. And even though I understand doing it for the purpose of building up the next character, it was done by Paikuhan, somebody who didn't even become a mainstay in the series at all. So it's one of those things where those things bug me, but in this instance, it bugged me because Jiren was really hyped up. And unless you live through the Dragon Ball Super era when we were covering it as it was airing, you may not have full context or understand, but he was heavily hyped up. So for Goku and Vegeta to just not really be that much weaker than him, when we saw him handling both of them with ease, it just seems extremely unrealistic. And I will say this, the power scaling in Dragon Ball Super Superhero is already kind of weird because of the fact that the film came out in the middle of the Granola arc and we have the Granola and Moro arcs still ongoing and we see Goku and Vegeta achieve new heights of power. So when Goku and Vegeta are referenced in the film, a lot of people have a different opinion about which Goku and Vegeta they're talking about. You know what I mean? Are they talking about the ones from Broly, the ones from this film, or the ones from where the manga's at? It's probably not the manga, but... This film clearly takes place later in the timeline, past where they're now in the Granola arc. So you would think that this version of Goku and Vegeta know how to use UI and UE effectively, but the Granola arc itself isn't even over yet. So we don't know what the final sort of uh, status is going to be of these characters by the time it ends. It's one thing if our heroes are able to overcome the wall that was Jiren. And I'm not even a huge Jiren fan. It's just, this is how it should be. It's one thing if they're able to overcome that wall through training, through will, and through desire. But it's another thing if they just write in that, well, he was never that strong. When literally Jiren's character for the majority of that arc was entirely focused on his strength. It's a very odd line and one that I'm not sure what they were thinking. I'm not sure what Toriyama was thinking when he wrote that line. Perhaps Toy Animation overhyped Jiren just to get eyeballs on the product. But to me, it really felt like how long it took for Jiren to be beaten and how impressive he looked for all those episodes. You have to remember how awesome he looked in all those episodes. It just really feels like... Something where it feels like cheap writing, to be honest, and it feels like something that they just came up with uh, out of the blue. I also think that it would have been better if Vegeta would have said that he wanted to have the better focus like Jiren and control without actually saying, oh, he wasn't that much stronger than us. I don't like that. I don't like that line. It's one thing to kind of, like I said earlier, become a better fighter because of your opponents and learn from them. It's something else to just go ahead and say, ah, he was never that strong when you know damn well he was. So that is the one part of Dragon Ball Super Superhero I did not like. Uh, well, there's a few parts I didn't like, but that's the one that I really did not like. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can't even say hopefully Jiren will get stronger because he probably will. But is that going to fix this line? It just reminds me of that line in Resurrection F when Frieza said he could hit a certain power level, even though that was something from back on Namek that he overcame. Like, it just, it feels like Toriyama writes these things and none of the Toei editors step in and say, wait a minute, sir, this is inaccurate or this makes no sense. But clearly the Japanese don't care about stuff like this. It's all about entertainment, so what more can we really say? Anyways, that's what I think. What do you think about that line? Let me know, and I'll talk to y'all real soon. Take care.